What you doing out there, Valor? You good boy. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the shop. This is uh, the third and last part of the phase converter build I'm doing. At this point, you've seen me rough it out. We've fine-tuned the selection of capacitors. We have added some additional safety and nicety type things like relays, etc. And so this episode is really all about how I'm boxing it up, how I'm putting it into a metal enclosure and mounting it, etc. Let's finish this up because I'm dying to run my lathe. This all begins with taking apart everything I put together. I start by taking off the motor and the output wire and then move this to another bench where I'll continue to take apart pieces and parts as I move them. As the final component mounting part of this project was materializing in my mind's eye, I planned to use two boxes. One with most of the capacitors and everything down by the idler motor and then a second smaller box mounted on the wall maybe even inside the shop that really just basically had a start and a stop button and an indicator light for the most part. I had even gone so far as to start making the boxes. The little one on the right is one that I had bent up and made a lid for and I was heading down that path. However I was out in the other barn and I discovered that I still had one more of these big gray security panel boxes. It's bigger than an electrical box in that it's deeper and the sheet metal on it is probably 50% again as heavy. This is the little sister to the box that I put mounted all of my CNC control equipment in when I built the CNC router. And this is going to turn out to be the perfect size. First thing I did was I cut a piece of plywood and painted it white and that was going to be the backer. I had a rough idea on how the wiring flow was going to go in the box so I started laying things out and just working through what kind of spacing was going to work the best. I took a little time to label the tops of the capacitors just to ensure that when I wired it for the final time I got it right. With the component mounting started I decided it was time to set the board in the box and see how the buttons were going to lay out. These are a modular style switch so I started by separating the button portion from the actual switching mechanism. I took a quick measurement of the size hole I needed and went and found the appropriate size panel knockout to make it. Panel knockouts are the coolest thing and I spend a little time showing you how they work. If you don't have this type of tool then you can use well anything that will drill a hole. For sheet metal I like to use a step drill if I'm not using panel knockouts. The way panel knockouts work is you start by drilling a hole through your panel or your sheet metal and that allows the bolt to go through and then there's it basically works like a really slow punch and die as you tighten the bolt up it pulls the punch through the sheet metal and creates a nice round hole these even come in rectangular shapes if you were to have a need I made holes for the start and stop buttons and the indicator light With the buttons installed, I clipped back on the switching mechanism. You may have noticed that the capacitors all have a threaded stud on the bottom, and I decided to use that to hold them onto some kind of a little shelf, and that's what I'm making here. This also allowed me to get out some more of the sheet metal toys I've got, and uh, found some punches that would allow me to punch the right size hole for that stud in the bottom as well as a couple of oval holes that I could use to hang the shelf. I got a little carried away filming this part but I was having a good time doing a little sheet metal work so humor me. Here I'm using the manual button punch for which you saw me dig out the punches from those two boxes a second ago. 
Next I moved over to the corner notcher where I was able to take out the bulk of the material that remained before I could do any of the bending. The slots and areas I couldn't get with the corner notcher I took out of the bandsaw. Next I went over to my box and pan break and after all of that lead up I had forgot to start my camera so we missed the first couple of bends but here it is doing what I can then I adjusted some fingers to start doing the ends. For this last tab I went over to the vise and used a hammer then a couple of pop rivets and some spray paint and it was done. With that little side road into sheet metal over with, I get back to the point at hand. Here I am mounting the capacitors into the tray I just built. And it turned into a nice neat little package. Everything held in there real nice. Uh, didn't have to worry about the wires trying to move things around. At this point I realized that I probably should grind away a little of that paint so that I had a good grounding contact. I went back and did this underneath all the capacitors and I also did it under the one mounting screw and you'll see me hook a ground wire to that later on. With a final junction block added at the bottom I proceeded to wire it back together. At this point I wasn't doing anything different. Uh, the wiring schematic is exactly like what's been in the previous two episodes. It's just organized differently. The stack of wires off to the side there are ones that were used in the original layout. And I'm reusing those just to save on the crimp connectors. So you'll see me pick one, measure it out, replace an end, etc. The next thing on my agenda was to build a base to set the pony motor on. I started with just four 2x4s put together in a little pallets type of situation. And then I added some old uh, valve springs out of a car motor to help additionally isolate the vibration. This worked out super well. You don't hear it vibrating. You obviously, you hear it running and you hear the fan, but that's it. And this brings us to what should be the final step, which is hang it from the wall and wire in the power. So I put a little cleat on the wall, as you can see here, just because the box had gotten pretty heavy. Set it up there and screwed it in, no big deal. Where I set the pony motor is just down into the left of where the panel is. And I wired that cable first. And this cable right here is really just got a plug hanging from the end of it. I'm going to use a uh, metal box screwed to the wall when I have an opportunity to pick one up. But for now it's just about an 18 inch length of that cable you see there with a plug on it that I can hook to the uh, shear. Next I ran power from the main panel out to the box and I ran that through conduit because I've got open trusses in the ceiling. You can... After I had this in I ran another piece of conduit which was the three phase back out of it and that went out the top and into the machine shop where I connected it to the lathe. The panel is hanging on the outside of what I call the machine shop. It's inside a greater part of the building, but the outside of the enclosed shop room. So here it is, hanging on the wall, but this is where the story got a little messy. If you watched episode two of this build, you'll know that at some point I had a problem with the potential relay not operating correctly and this is where it is. If you look at the bottom of the start capacitor you can see the bottoms all blown out of it. For whatever reason the relay stopped disengaging taking the capacitor out of the circuit. So it ran for just a very brief time and then went pop. Luckily there was no electrical short or anything like that. I was able to shut it all down. The problem was what to do. And I knew right away I didn't want to continue to use the potential relay. So I came up with an alternative. 
I wanted to maintain a single button push start to the phase converter and I wanted to maintain also one of the advantages that the potential relay has which is it's a normally closed switch so when you power things on that initial onrush current doesn't have an opportunity to arc when uh, a button or a switch is closing so the trick was how do I make a single push button with double pull double throw close one circuit before the actual on circuit which trips the motor starter relay and I did it with these modular switches I found that there was a distance that you could push the switch beyond what beyond the point at which the mechanical actuation had happened on the button mechanism itself there are two tabs one for each of the actual switches so I filed down one of the tabs so that that switch would actuate just after the other. So the one that activates first I hooked to the starter capacitor so that it would already be in circuit before the onrush current. That would be the second of the switches and that's what turns on the motor starter relay. So with that I had the benefits of both worlds. Single button push start and I didn't have to worry about any arcing because I knew the start capacitor was in the circuit before power was applied. Well there it is everybody, the completion of my phase converter build and install. I hope you've enjoyed the video series and uh, maybe picked up some things along the way. For now, thanks for coming by the shop and we'll see you next time.